So there are people on my TV, yeah, in cloaks. Uh, they're riding around in golden horse-drawn carriages. They're carrying huge staffs, you know, with massive rubies stuck on the end of them. And, you know, thousands of beaming peasants are lining the roads to cheer these people on, you know, on their way to this big solemn occasion in the big old church. Yeah, welcome to 21st century Britain on the weekend of the new king's coronation. Can we please just do a music list? Ah, I'm seriously beginning to lose it here. Hi, Darren here, and today I have a list of 20 songs that reference uh, royalty, either real or imagined, directly or obliquely, you know, in one form or another. As usual, these are mostly drawn from punk and alternative artists, but not all of them. And yes, this is my way of coping with a world that's seemingly just gone mad. These are all very heavy, serious numbers. Some of these are quite light and some of them are barely about royalty at all, but we'll proceed anyway. But one big spoiler alert. Yeah, no sex pistols. OK, first up, I've got uh, Killing Joke and Kings and Queens. Yeah, this is a great single from the band's uh, 1985 album Night Time. It's this very defiant, bitter call to live like kings and queens, you know, despite the unremitting horror and drudgery and awfulness of modern life. <laughs> Yay, you see, jazz gets it. OK, next up, I've got The Fall and Slang King. Yeah, this is from the band's wonderful and frightening 1984 album, uh, The Wonderful and Frightening World of the Fall. Um, I think I'm repeating myself. Uh, yeah, it, this is typically catchy kind of Bricks era twisted pop fall, uh, mostly concerning itself with the annoying try-hard hipster slang king of the title. Uh, this one has some great lyrics. Yeah, Mark sings, uh, During a lull in his attack, three little girls with only 50 pence had to take had to put the curly whirly back. Uh, I'm sure we've all been there. Well, maybe if you grew up in the 80s. Yeah, next up, I've got the Smiths and uh, the Queen is dead. Yeah, uh, no passing mentions here. No, 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 no. This is uh, Morrissey uh, imagining breaking into Buckingham Palace and confronting his distant relative, Queen Elizabeth, and essentially ending up uh, none the wiser. Yeah, uh, life is very long when you're lonely, Morrissey sings. Yeah, as uh, Johnny Marr scowls away his wah-wah, the song's riotous conclusion, yeah. Um, this is from uh, the album of the same name, The Queen Is Dead. And I think it's one of the Smiths most aggressive, you know, most raucous songs. Uh, it's a vehicle for Morrissey's yeah, outspoken anti-monarchist views. Yeah, uh, that, that album. Yeah, uh, the track leads off the album, uh, which many proclaim to be, you know, the Smiths' uh, greatest album. Uh, could be, maybe. Yeah, uh, I think we'll save that discussion for another day. Yeah, next we have R.E.M. with King of Birds. Yeah, uh, back to the metaphorical kings here with a standout track, I think, from the band's final IRS album, 1987's Document, which I have here. Yes, uh, I am the king of all I see, my kingdom for a voice, sings Stipe. King of Birds, yeah, seems to encapsulate this idea, the, you know, the conundrum of, you know, what is artistic creation? How do you corral ideas? Where do they come from? Uh, is it something innate? Or can it be learned? Either way, it's a great song with a fantastic bit of dulcimer from Peter Buck, lending the song an odd, uh, you know, almost mystical kind of atmosphere. Next, uh, The Stranglers and uh, Duchess. Yeah, this is a 1979 single from The Men in Black. And the Duchess of the title is apparently, uh, according to Hugh Cornwell, based on a real person, an acquaintance who was uh, minor royalty. Yeah, they were titled, they owned land, they had a big house in the country, all that stuff. But she was apparently completely uninterested in the upper class dimwit suitors that she was scheduled to, you know, hook up with, you know, these being the Rodneys that uh, Cornwell is singing about in the song. Yeah, she much preferred slamming it, if you like, with bad boy rock stars instead, which probably explains why uh, she and Hugh were acquainted. Uh, say no more. Yeah, next up, uh, 50 Foot Queenie by PJ Harvey. Yeah, the Rid of Me album uh, just turned 30 a, a day or so ago. And this was the lead single. You know, this is rollicking. Dirty, sexy, bluesy number with you know a nice line in misappropriation of traditional gender roles. You know the whole issue of size uh, crops up rather frequently. Uh, if you get my drift, yeah, it's thrashy, it's trashy, and it's very funny. Uh, next, I've got Rain King uh, by Sonic Youth. I've always found myself drawn to the uh, Lee Ronaldo song numbers on Sonic Youth albums uh, without ever really being able to explain why. You know his lyrics are always this kind of diced up, semi sensical uh, beat poetry. But his delivery is great, really tough and husky and semi-spoken. Um, yeah, this is one of a couple of great Lee vocal cuts on their 1988 Daydream Nation uh, album. Are still their best, I think. Uh, the other one on that album being the fantastic Hey Joni. But yeah, I like this one. Uh, and it has King in the title, uh, so it's in. OK, next up, I've got uh, David Bowie's uh, Heroes. Yes. Um, avert your eyes, maybe. Uh, 
This government's Department for uh, Culture, Media and Sport, that's the DCMS, has commissioned, compiled, uh, whatever, a Spotify playlist to celebrate the coronation of King Charles III this weekend. And uh, yes, of course, it's an obscenely dull exercise in anodyne, softly, softly selections and box ticking. I'll link to it below so you can see the damage for yourself. Um, yeah, their David Bowie selection for this playlist is Let's Dance, of course, being, you know, a solid sing-along choice, and one of his biggest, most recognisable hits. But uh, honestly, why not Heroes? You know, the lyrics, I, I will be king and you, you will be queen. Yeah, I guess someone fell asleep at their desk at the DCMS uh, on playlist day. Uh, either that or the song's message of, you know, freedom and escape and transcendence through simple acts of love and kindness and bravery. Um, these are things that make us kings and queens, uh, not blood or names or money. And I think that might chafe a bit with the stars of this particular show. Uh, next up, I've got The Pretty Things and Baron Saturday. Yeah, ooh, a Baron. Yeah, uh, one of the lower ranks in the pyramid of nobility, but it's good enough for this list. Yeah, this is from their album uh, SF Sorrow. It's a fantastic piece of late 60s Brit psychedelia. Uh, from, I think, one of the most unsung bands of that era, uh, who were also big, big, big favourites of David Bowie. Yeah, Baron Saturday is actually a character from kind of voodoo mythology, but, you know, in the hands of the pretty things, uh, he's clearly just another drug proxy, you know, alongside all those other great musical examples, you know, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, the Acid Queen, uh, and of course, Ebenezer Good. So many references in this song. Yeah, you get Edward Lear, you get Nursery Rhymes, you get Lewis Carroll. Uh, they all crop up in the lyrics and yeah it's one of my favorite tracks on this this amazing album yeah next up i've got sparkle horse and homecoming queen yeah don't we always tend to use you know king and queen as like makeshift titles to, to elevate other success or their attractiveness or their prowess and the homecoming queen here uh, this is the opening track from uh, the viva dixie submarine transmission plot album uh, it's no exception but here it seems to be deployed as a kind of a counterpoint to the real mood of the track you know the decay the letdown the faded. Yeah, it's a beautiful, slight, impossibly sad little song with the homecoming queen playing kind of the hopeful role, you know, the diamond in the dirt. I think it's lovely. I'm dealing with the next two tracks together. They're from the same band. And in fact, they're from the same album. I just really couldn't bear to separate them. Uh, that album is Arthur or The Decline and Fall of the British Empire by The Kinks, released in 1969. Yeah, this album is easily the equal of the previous year's Village Green Preservation Society album. You know, uh, it tackles issues of society, of class and the empire, you know, with marvellous wit and warmth and invention. Yeah, the track Victoria waves a little flag for the Queen of the same name from the perspective of the working class. You know, they're looking for a symbol of constancy, hope and guidance in a world where, you know, the empire that they'd seen assembled before them was crumbling and disappearing before their eyes. Yeah, this is a fantastic piece of songwriting, uh, very memorably covered by The Fall too, if that helps. She's bought a hat like Princess Marina, explores, you know, the roots of, you know, the persistence of, if you like, the British class system, again, from a working class background. The characters in the song, they strive and they skimp and they save for the slightest tokens and symbols to bring them closer to their perceived, you know, betters, uh, even whilst they work the most menial of jobs and often can't afford to eat. Yeah, the role of the media, you know, the paparazzi in the propagation of the UK class divide is writ large in Ray Davis's wonderful lyric here. And the song itself is typically rambunctious kinks swinging between, you know, sedate chamber pop and this kind of music hall comedy in a little over three minutes. It's proper genius. Uh, moving on a little more quickly now. Yeah, I've got King of Soul by the Wolfgang Press. Yeah, the oddballs, I think, of the 80s 4AD roster, you know, darkly kind of funky post-punk, uh, deeply odd and aloof, but with this dark humour never far from the surface. Yeah, my eyes have seen the glory, but my body is on hold, they sing in King of Soul. Yeah, this track is from what I think is their best album, 1988's Birdwood Cage. And I think that's a record that really needs a little more love nowadays. Yeah, next up, I've got Mark Eitzel and uh, The Queen of No One. Uh, one of the best tracks, I think, from one of Mark's best solo albums, that being uh, 1998, I'm caught in a trap and I can't back out because I love you too much, baby. Yeah, um, maybe shorter titles would help, Mark. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, again, with the elevation of an inadequate or undeserving character to the role of Queen, um, except this time, you know, that desperation in the song is explicit in the title character, the Queen of No One. Yeah, this one comes with this fantastic room-filling chorus. Um, 
and features James McNew of Yola Tango and Steve Shelley of Sonic Youth in Mark's backing band this time around. Now Mark sings, some of them are queens of prejudice and pride that dine on heroism. This is just classic Eitzel. Uh, yeah, I love it. Next selection, yes, and I've got Depeche Mode and New Dress. This one comes from 1986's uh, Black Celebration album. And um, yeah, this one explicitly name checks Princess Di. That weirdly submissive vampiric relationship between the royals and the paparazzi is right at the heart of New Dress. Uh, you know, the lyric it foregrounds these horrifying real world news stories, only to follow it up with the line, Princess Di is wearing a new dress. For me, if you cast your mind back a few tracks, this one reads like a kind of a dark electro goth take, if you like, on the kinks, uh, Princess Marina. Next, I've got uh, King Beer by uh, Animals That Swim. Uh, yeah, I've talked them up before. I, I think it's one of the better of my overly talky 90s videos. So, you know, go check it out for more background on the band. Yeah, this is more like it. You know, beer is a far more important element of British society than our rickety messed up constitution or what passes for one. Um, so anything that elevates it to its rightful position is all right with me. Yeah, King Beer is a wonderful song and a reminder of what Britpop could have been like uh, if not for the woeful standard of music journalism in the latter half of the 1990s. So next I've got a bit of a two for here. I I'm going to group them together. Uh, both these guys share a lyrical obsession, I think, with kings and queens and princesses and the like, which is pretty much born out of a common love of late 60s to early 70s, you know, British psychedelic music and prog rock. So yeah, first up, uh, Robin Hitchcock. Uh, in Veins of the Queen, uh, Robin imagines travelling along Queen Elizabeth's uh, circulatory system and marvelling at how much better maintained uh, her veins are than most uh, normal people's. Uh, yeah, it's quite an odd one, this. And yeah, Robert Pollard, yeah, um, from Guided by Voices, I've got King and Caroline. This is a wispy kind of stram through uh, about 90 seconds of climbing melodies and Beatlesque backing vocals uh, with a lyric that uh, I think means very little to anyone but Robert. Next. So the penultimate song on this list is Repeat uh, UK by The Manic Street Preachers. Yeah, I may have left out the Sex Pistols, but I have left room for some genuine aggro uh, with the last two numbers on this list. The Mannix, I, ha I have a slightly difficult relationship with them. They basically come from my hometown or, or thereabouts very close by. So I'm intrinsically kind of drawn to them. But a handful of their albums aside, um, there are large parts of their work that, that doesn't really do too much for me. But I don't mind this kind of early generation terrorist period as you know they were clearly out to ruffle people. And Repeat UK makes absolutely no bones about that at all. Yeah, a sample lyric. Uh, fuck Queen and Country, repeat after me, death sentence, heritage. Uh, death camp, palace, useless generations, dumb flag scum. Uh, you see, when they put it like that, yeah, I totally get it. <laughs> yeah, It's fairly generic pistols, New York dolls, glammed up punk rock. But they know the power of a simple sentiment expressed economically. And Repeat does that. And the final entry on this list, number 20, I've got Charles Windsor by McCarthy. Yeah, these happen to be a favourite of uh, Nicky Wire of the Mannix, one of his favourite bands of, you know, the late 1980s. He actually gave his son the middle name McCarthy as a mark of his, you know, his love for the band. Uh, they're probably more well known nowadays for being Tim Gaines' pre-Stereo Lab band, but McCarthy are much, much more than an indie footnote. Yeah, Charles Windsor from their 1989 debut album, I'm a Wallet, is a pretty no-holds-barred depiction of a mass Republican uprising, yeah, replete with guillotines. Malcolm Eden sings, yeah, here the rabble comes, the kind you hoped were dead, they've come to chop, to chop off your head. And bear in mind that the music accompanying this is the sweetest, jangliest C86 style indie pop you could ever hope to find. Yeah, McCarthy were avowedly left-wing and used their music to explore the failures of capitalism, the class system and, you know, global economics. For the time, for that period, uh, they were pretty much one of a kind. And to hear these sentiments expressed in song, you know, like the birds, if they were part of some kind of armed revolutionary militia, um, it's still remarkably bracing. And that's the end of my list. Yeah, um, if you happen to be a viewer from the UK, you'll know how crazy uh, the media gets about this stuff. And yeah, it drives me around the bend. This was kind of therapy for me just to get, get me away from the TV and, and watching all this crap uh, and just to put together a list of some fairly lighthearted, I think, in places, um, songs which reference royalty. Yeah, if you've liked the video, uh, please show your appreciation. Give, give us a click. Um, and if you want to add a comment about anything or if you have any questions about any of the, the songs or my selections here, then yeah, 
um, put them down below the line and I'll be sure to get back to you. Again, if you got this far, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video uh, and I hope you enjoy your weekend. I, I will try my best, but uh, I can't make any promises. Yeah, uh, you take care and uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.